In our top stories, Tokyo Electric Power Company says it is making final preparations to activate special purification equipment to treat radioactive wastewater at the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. A number of Chinese naval vessels have passed through the international waters between the islands of Japan's southernmost prefecture of Okinawa. And the World Bank has forecast near zero growth for Japan in 2011 due to the impact of the March 11 quake and tsunami. Now, the news in detail. Tokyo Electric Power Company says it is making final preparations to activate special purification equipment to treat radioactive wastewater at the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The company plans to start up the system on June 15th. On Wednesday, TEPCO tested the control board of a U.S. developed device that absorbs radioactive cesium. It also tested the pumps of a French device that uses special chemicals to settle radioactive substances in the water. The new water purification system has two other main parts that use Japanese and imported technology. TEPCO says it expects the system to decontaminate about 1,200 tons of water per day before it is transferred to temporary storage tanks within the compound of the nuclear plant. More than 105,000 tons of toxic water is believed to have already accumulated in the basements of the reactors and their turbine buildings. Every day, more than 500 tons of contaminated water is added to the amount as TECPO has to inject fresh water into the reactors to keep them cool. TEPCO will release air from inside the number two reactor building after lowering its intense radioactivity and high humidity which have been hampering the work to restore its cooling system. The number two reactor building has 99.9% .9 humidity and high levels of radioactivity which make it hard for workers in protective gear to work inside it for long periods. The utility firm plans to install air filters to lower the contamination and humidity and then open the building's doors to let out the air. It hopes to install the filters by this Saturday, run them for about three days and open the reactor building's doors sometime next week. The company plans to begin the work for injecting nitrogen into the number two reactor later this month to prevent a hydrogen explosion. TEPCO is studying a plan to decontaminate seawater pulled at the Fukushima Daini nuclear power plant and discharge it into the sea. The utility says about 3,000 cubic meters of radioactive seawater has been stagnant in the basement of the plant's reactor and turbine buildings since the March 11th earthquake and tsunami. It says the temperature in all four of the plant's reactors has fallen below 100 degrees Celsius, the cites the risk that stagnant seawater will corrode the equipment. TEPCO is considering a plan to decontaminate the water so that it meets national safety standards and then release it into the Pacific Ocean. The utility says the concentration of radioactive cesium in the water is 30 times the permissible limit, but that it contains no other radioactive materials exceeding the safety limits. In April, TEPCO drew strong criticism for discharging contaminated water with levels of radioactive iodine-131, about 100 times the limit from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The utility will decide whether to discharge water from the Daini plant after consulting with local municipalities, people in the fishing industry, and the fisheries agency. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency says that a full examination of the plan is necessary even if radioactivity is below the safety limit. It added that the concerns of local municipalities and people in the fishing industry must be taken into account. The Fisheries Agency says it cannot now authorize a discharge of seawater even if the level of contamination is under the limit. The chief of the Fishing Cooperatives Association in Fukushima Prefecture expressed shock and bewilderment at the utility's plan. You're listening to NHK World Radio Japan in Tokyo. On May 22nd, the leaders of Japan, China and South Korea met in Japan and together they visited Fukushima Prefecture, one of the hardest hit regions in the March 11th earthquake and tsunami. The Japanese government's aim was to show the international community that Fukushima is safe. But what did China hope to achieve with its premier's visit? 
In today's insights, Daisuke Kondo, Vice General Manager of Kodansha Beijing, the Chinese arm of a major Japanese publishing house, talks about China's motivations through his long-time observations of the country's diplomatic policies. Based in Beijing, Kondo was able to speak to some of the Chinese diplomats who accompanied the premier to Japan. First of all, China wants to help create groups sympathetic to the country's policies within Japan. Next year marks the 40th anniversary of the normalization of diplomatic ties, but the perception of China in Japan has been worsening since the collisions last fall between a Chinese trawler and Japanese patrol boats near Japan's Senkaku Islands in the East China Sea, also claimed by China. The country does not want a repeat of the soured relations with Japan under the leadership of former Prime Minister Junichiro Koizumi. Secondly, China also wants to remove anti-Japanese sentiment among its own citizens that has also been on the rise since last fall. The Chinese government is concerned about the possibility that anti-Japanese sentiment will trigger an uprising that could in turn threaten the Chinese political system. China explained to the public that when visited the disaster hit area in Japan to show China's appreciation toward Japan for the help it offered after the Sichuan earthquake three years ago. This strategy helped ease anti-Japanese sentiment in China to a great extent. China is now making great efforts to promote nuclear power generation. 28 nuclear power plants are under construction, accounting for 43% of all nuclear power plants now being built across the world. Premier Wen announced safety checks would be carried out at all nuclear power plants three days after the March 11th disaster. However, at the same time, China remains committed to increasing electricity output through nuclear power generation to 70 million kilowatts by 2020. People who work in the Chinese electric power industry have told me that Wen is expected to conclude these checks by the end of this year at the latest. He apparently wanted to stress that Fukushima is safe to pave the way for such a move. Japanese reconstruction projects in disaster hit areas were another reason for the Premier's visit to Fukushima, as China wants its companies to take part in these projects. In the Tohoku region, many companies that possess advanced technologies have been facing financial difficulties since the disaster. China is also interested in acquiring these firms. A Chinese delegation came to Japan in late May and met with Japanese travel agencies and local government officials to promote package tours to Japan for affluent Chinese. Separately, China also announced it will send a group to promote Chinese investments in Japan, as well as to invite 500 Japanese youths from disaster-struck areas to China. Details of these projects are now under discussion. In today's Insight, we talked with Daisuke Kondo, Vice General Manager of Kodansha Beijing, about the motivations of Chinese Premier Wen Jiabao's visit to Fukushima in May. A number of Chinese naval vessels have passed through the international waters between the islands of Japan's southernmost prefecture of Okinawa. The Japanese Defense Ministry's Joint Staff Office says it has confirmed that three Chinese naval vessels, including a supply ship, sailed 100 kilometers northeast of Okinawa's Miyako Island toward the Pacific Ocean early on Wednesday. A Chinese Savramani class destroyer and four other vessels were also seen sailing the same route around noon Wednesday. The ships are now south of Okinawa's main island and heading southeast, apparently, to conduct drills in the Pacific Ocean. The Chinese Navy has been conducting exercises in the Pacific Ocean since 2008, passing through Okinawa's main and Miyako Islands. The Defense Ministry says the self-defense forces are continuing to watch the Chinese fleet, believing that the Chinese Navy aims to improve its ability to conduct long-term activities in the open sea. Power generators featuring Japan's energy-saving technology have begun operations in India. The Tata Motor Factory in the western city of Pune on Wednesday began using two generators that run on diesel oil and natural gas. The generators originally ran only on diesel fuel, but a Japanese company remodeled them with about $3 million provided by Japan's new energy and industrial technology development organization, or NEDO. NEDO says this is the first time for India to use a generator that can run on both diesel fuel and natural gas. 
The organization also says the cost of power generation is 60% less than conventional products. India's rapid economic growth has caused power supply shortages, prompting many factories to install diesel-powered generators. But with the price of diesel oil rising, natural gas is being seen as a more affordable fuel source. The Indian government plans to set power-saving targets for eight industries, such as steelmaking and aluminum refineries, in coming months. Japan hopes that the power generators will help promote its energy-saving technologies in India. The World Bank has forecast a near, near zero growth for Japan in 2011 due to the impact of the March 11th quake and tsunami. The bank released the June 2011 edition of its report Global Economic Prospects on Tuesday. The report says Japan's GDP growth from April to June could end up almost the same as the analyzed contraction of 3.7 percent posted in the January-March period. The report says this will be attributable to power shortages resulting from the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant as well as the disaster's impact on supply chains. The World Bank forecasts 0.1% growth for Japan in 2011, but it says the economy may pick up later in the year thanks to growing demand due to reconstruction. It projects that the Japanese economy will grow 2.6% next year. The report says global GDP is expected to grow 3.2% in 2011 thanks to high growth in emerging economies. But the bank also warns of future uncertainty, citing factors including a protracted negative impact from Japan's disaster, rising food prices and fiscal deficits in some European countries. The International Monetary Fund's acting chief has urged Japan to reduce its huge public debts while recovering from the March 11th earthquake and tsunami disaster. John Lipsky was speaking with Japan's finance minister Yoshihiko Noda in Tokyo on Wednesday. Lipke said he expects Japan's economy to grow 2.9% in 2012, up from an earlier forecast of 2.1%. He also said it is a crucial challenge for Japan to make its financial standing sounder and carry out reconstruction work. Noda replied that Japan cannot put off disaster and fiscal reconstruction and that it's important to compile a social security and tax reform program as a package. Lipsky is in Japan for the IMF's annual review of Japan's economy and economic policies. The fund says the country could finance an extra budget for reconstruction work through various tax measures, such as raising the national consumption tax. Japan's public debts are about twice the size of its $5 trillion economy and the worst among developed countries. A Japanese government survey shows that business confidence among people with jobs that are sensitive to economic trends improved in May for the second straight month. The Cabinet Office released the results of its nationwide survey of more than 2,000 retail, restaurant and other workers on Wednesday. An index that shows how workers view economic conditions compared to three months before stood at 36.0 per stood at 36.0, up 7.7 points from the previous month. The rise is attributed to recovery in store sales, travel and the food service industry amid a weakening of the trend to refrain from spending on leisure activities after the March 11th disaster. Also cited as a factor is rising demand related to recovery efforts and for energy efficient products such as LED lights. Private credit research firm Takeover Data Bank says 154 companies had gone bankrupt due to the March 11th disaster as of Tuesday. Construction firms accounted for the highest number of corporate failures, followed by hotels and inns. The businesses cited poor individual consumption as the main reason for their bankruptcy. Finally, let's take another look at the top stories out this hour. TEPCO says it is making final preparations to activate special purification equipment to treat radioactive wastewater at the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. And a number of Chinese naval vessels have passed through the international waters between the islands of Japan's southernmost prefecture of Okinawa. And that was the news from NHK World Radio Japan in Tokyo. I'm Joseph Queenie. And I'm Keiko Kitagawa.